they build power boats that ride waves faster than most cars ride the road? How do they craft the timeless timepiece that is the Swiss watch? And how do they roll out fine quality wallpaper good enough to grace the walls of Buckingham Palace? We take you around the world to show you how on How Do They Do It? enough to outrun most things on sea or land. But building a waterborne missile is a titanic engineering challenge. So, how do they do it? Power boats are the Formula One cars of the seas. A favorite of celebrities and smugglers, these nautical speed demons could outrun a torpedo. Not many of us have topped 130 miles an hour on water. But Phil Lipschutz made a career of it. As a two-time world champion powerboat racer, he knows that these million-dollar boats can damage a lot more than your bank account. I had a real bad one where we stuck the nose in on one at about 140 and tore my insides all apart and came through the, the dash on it. It's not for everybody, but man, there's a big rush to it. And once you really get hooked in it, it gets in your blood and you can't get it out. These days, Phil sells a lot more boats than he crashes. And he gets all of his stock from here, Cigarette Racing. Founded by powerboat racing legend Don Arano in the 1960s, they've given a whole new meaning to the phrase, stepping out for a quick cigarette. These days, they build boats for anyone from Enrique Iglesias to George Bush Sr. People ask you what it's like to operate one of these boats it's beyond the realm of most people's human experience. There's no thrill like it on Earth, uh, except maybe the space shuttle. Okay, let's take it down and set it on those two horses down there. And to reach rocket-like speeds, you need a whole lot of horsepower. It used to be a big ticket was 420 horsepower. Now we look at boats with 1,350 horsepower in one motor. So we've seen a steady, steady increase in horsepower, and uh, I don't see anything slowing down right now. The problem with adding more power is that you need a boat that's tough enough to handle it, but doesn't weigh 100 tons. To create a super strong, lightweight structure, layers of fiberglass and resin are carefully built up over a gel coat base. Made from tiny glass filaments, fiberglass is ideal for boat building, as it's moldable, waterproof, lightweight, and strong. Picture yourself diving off a diving board and doing a belly flop. You hit the water and it stings. You're going four miles an hour, five miles an hour. This thing's going a hundred. You literally see stars. The mold gives birth to a finished fiberglass hull, but this is just the boat's skin. Next, it needs a skeleton. And when this baby hits the water at top speed, both skin and bones need to be able to bend. To deal with this issue, Valve uses a top-secret space-age material made from balsa wood. That's right, the same thing you whittled in woodwork class is key to the durability of a million-dollar speedboat. Mother Nature spent a million years designing this material, and uh, if you think about how a tree does in life, it has to bend and flex millions and millions of times, so the material is very ideally designed for a boat that has to run and flex millions and millions of times. But having a million dollar boat is no good if it doesn't have looks to match. To create something fit for a president, everything from steering wheels to seats is handcrafted and hand stitched. When buffed up, the boat is as slippery as butter. But to reach its top speed, it needs to do more than cut through the water like a knife. It has to fly over the surface. Yeah, one, one, in, one very noticeable aspect of these boats is how narrow they are. When you look at the boat, you see it's long, skinny boat, and that's just kind of a fact of life that skinny boats are easy to drive fast. But they need to be more than skinny. They need to be pointy, too. It's all about playing the angles. If the boat cuts too deep, it creates drag. So a sharp angle between the bottom and the sides reduces the area of the hull that's in contact with the water. 
and an air-filled cavity helps lift it above the waves. It's the nautical equivalent of walking on water. Air flows under the boat, the water's rushing off here, there's a cavity formed, air fills the cavity, and this lubricates the flow of water and boat and air. It's like the boat is actually riding on a cushion of bubbles, and that reduces the skin friction. And that's a big breakthrough in these boats. That, that accounted for probably a 20% gain in speed by adding these features to the boat. With all that speed, the last thing you want to do is flip it. To keep it stable, the back of the boat is fitted with things called trim tabs and drives. This is the drive. It articulates in two directions. It can go up and down, and it can steer. The trim tabs basically go up and down, and what they do is control the attitude of the boat fore and aft. If you've got the drive angle wrong at big speed and you turn the boat, you may roll it on its side and roll it upside down or something else equally ugly. So it takes a certain amount of uh, skill and experience to run these things at, at very high speeds. And those high speeds are thanks to the 1,350 horsepower engines, two of them. Interior and engines installed, and you have something that would humble Hugh Hefner. There's only one way to test the finished product, and that's out on the water. But Miami's marinas are hot property, so finding somewhere to store your boat is a bit of a problem. The solution is a multi-story speedboat park. Once it's in, there's the issue of getting it out. So you do it very, very carefully. Take this high-speed powerboat past 100 miles per hour without breaking a sweat. At $700,000, you may need to rob a bank to buy one, but at least the cops won't catch you. Still to come, 